So hello everyone. Uh, today we'll be seeing about Bayesian France and Monte Carlo Markov chain. So in this week challenge, we've been uh, seeing about having the data about uh, analyzing the price of oil and trying to find out in which part or what type of events will make the data or the price of the oil vary in large amount or in small amount, what events really have an impact on the on that industry okay so yeah before just starting or uh yeah directly getting to what bayesian statistics uh, is and why do we use the bayesian theory and things like that we might just cope up with the those concepts of course we are familiar with statistics also distribution and something so yeah the distribution and the in statistics in statistics those are the common terms you know the distributions the somethings and also the parameters in which we're going to mention those words very um repetitively after this so maybe we might not be so that you might not be confused about it so in distribution we mean for example let's say we're doing a, a hypothesis or yeah uh, it's statistics for a to measure the height of people or uh, yeah the height of people in some area for example so yeah that height or is there is there very large amount of number in with uh, large heat and small heat those are the distribution of the data so something in order to know the heat or in, in order to calculate the uh, the estimation you know it might be hard or difficult to go through all the people or to measure all the people so, so that we can take just sample of few people so that who would we think that they will represent the whole society and then there's the real parameters of course which is the mean the variance the proportion or any number of parameters that we want to estimate or that we want to know about that uh, population so there's the whole, there's this basic concept or the method the statistics method that we all use uh, randomly it is called the frequentist approach it is maybe we don't we're not familiar with the word but it's the approach that we that we will use uh, often so this approach is classical way of doing statistics which means it treats the parameters of statistical model as fixed but unknown quantities okay so before starting the statistics the statistics or the hypothesis we need to know or we need to have the fir the first estimation or the first value uh, estimation for those people maybe for their height maybe for the for their anything okay so that value is called we're going to take that value fix it but it is unknown we, we're just going to put some hypothesis on that so the primary focus is on the data co collected through repeated sampling and how this data can be used to make inference about the parameters so depending on the data we have uh then we're going to make an inference for the for those parameters okay so uh it is just a skull model it is a fixed but unknown quantities for the mean for the uh if if if, if the thing that we're, or if the parameter that we're looking for is mean that is that is it, or maybe the height or the standard deviations the median so we're going to take them as a fixed but unknown value but on the base theorem yeah, the first one is before the Bayesian statistics. Yeah, it's, it's used a theorem called Bayes, right? It's simply updating our prior intuition or intuitions about the parameter with information we gather from our sample, and then it becomes a question of how much do we weight our prior intuition versus how much do we weight the information we got from our sample. So it means that we might have a prior estimation or a prior analysis of uh, this is the, you know, the like the hypothesis or the estimation that we have about this specific parameter and then we're going to update the parameter depending on the new data or the new observation that we're going to have which is uh, which means it's simply updating our prior intuition about the parameter with information we gather for from our sample okay and then it becomes a question of uh, how much are we going to depend on the data or on the observation on the new observation that we have made or which way it's more okay or the data or the analysis or the estimation that we already have or we give from our sample, okay? Uh, so in the Bayesian theory, uh, there is uh, the P of data. Um, so like uh, now we have mentioned that there is the, imagine the thing that we have to, uh, that we want to estimate is like a function, okay? P of A slash data, which means on this, by this data, we mean that the data that we have observed or the new observation in A is the already the prior oh. observation or the prior estimation that we have, okay, which is P of data, um, 
it, it is calculated this way. We're not supposed to know the details about the calculation, but it is just good to know the knowledge, right? So the concept I mean. Yeah, so in this data we mean uh, that the data that depend, the new data or the new observed data, here it's the posterior, yeah, overall P A slash data, it's called the posterior, which is the new distribution or that we're going to have after doing the Bayesian theorem. So P of data slash A, it's called the likelihood, which is uh, we have observed or we have new observation of data, right, that we're going to update our parameters based on this data, right? So it's calculating that how much are we going to get how much are we going to get uh, so yeah doing this calculation i mean taking the parameter a how likely are we going to get this value a or this parameter a in the data or in the new data okay so which means uh, the, is the, how much are the new observation or the new uh, parameter is going to be what type of chance do we have to get this type of observation on the previous one P of A is the prior observation that we have, and P of data, it's just normalizing constant that we're going to divide the whole this P of data slash A times P of A in order to normalizing the, to, to, to normalize the number, okay, making sure that our posterior distribution will sum to one. So just this is just uh, normalizing constant. So, and the next is what is Monte Carlo uh, or Monte Carlo Markov chain in CMC. So, it's a class of algorithm. It's used to sample from probability distribution when direct sampling is difficult. So, we're talking about here, uh, yeah, we're talking about sampling, right? We're going to have a sample in order to calculate uh, our. So, we, we ju we've just said the base theorem is about changing the parameters or updating the parameters, right? So, we have we're going to have a sample or a data or an observation that it, that we're going to update the parameters depending on, right? So here, it's a class of algorithm used to sample from probability distribution when direct sampling is difficult, okay? So it's, there might be situations where direct sampling or taking just some data from uh, from the distribution would be difficult. So this method, uh, they're particularly useful in Bayesian statistics to approximate the posterior distribution or which is the end result of uh, the Bayesian statistics or inference. So uh, what are the steps on Monte MCMC or Monte Carlo Markov chain? What are the steps? The first one is Monte Carlo simulation, and then there's the Markov chain. Then combining that, we will get the Monte Carlo Markov chain method. Okay, so the first one is it's a method of estimating numerical results by randomly sampling from a priority distribution. Okay. So, uh, so imagine trying to estimate the area of an irregular shape by throwing darts at it. So by counting the number of darts that land inside the shape, you can estimate its area. So uh, since the end result or the end goal is to just take some amount of samples or samples that will al align, that will be uh, proportional with the posterior, uh, the, the posterior uh, estimation or distribution that we're going to find out from the Bayesian theorem, we're going to do, we're going to take some, something from a probability distribution. And then, so the Monte Carlo, or the first step, is about taking uh, numerical estimation by randomly sampling from a probability distribution. So from that probability distribution, or from that from that sample we get from the probability distribution, we will be able to put, to, to, to estimate numerical results so that maybe the parameters, the the parameters that we need. Yeah. So and then there's the Markov chain. What do the Markov chain rely on? The Monte Carlo simulation is it's a sequence of events or states where the probability of each event depends only on the state attained in the previous event. So it is like working through a city. So which means that we already have some parameters that uh, we have estimated or we have gained from the Monte Carlo estimation, right? From some samples or from uh, randomly sampling from a priority distribution, okay? So in the next step on the Markov chain, we're going to iterate through this uh, process until we get some value that will be a better uh, representative of the data or a better sample, okay? So on this uh, iteration, the second iteration will only depend on the first iteration or on the first step of in what that did it depend or uh, what was the first result or what was the result from the first iteration so the second iteration will depend will depend on the first iteration mm -hmm. so it's a sequence of events or states we can call them where the probability of each event depends only on the state attending the previous event so the combining them which is 
start the, the enzyme C method use the Markov chain to generate sample from the distribution. Right, uh, so like uh, while combining the two steps, this is what we get. The first one is we'll start with an initial state and use a transition rule to move to a new state based on the current state, and then we'll repeat this process many times to create a chain of state. And these states are a uh, sufficient number of iterations, approximate the desired distribution. So, depending on the accuracy or uh, the rules that we're going to assign in order to go from the first state to the second state. It will repeat itself for the iteration. So those are those two are the key concepts. Maybe if the if they're not clear. So the first one is involves using random sampling to solve problems that might be deterministic in principle, and it is used to estimate numerical results by performing repeated random sampling. And then the Markov chain is sequence of events or states where the probability of each event depends on the first one. So in Bayesian statics there will be complex models where calculating the posterior distribution analytically is difficult or impossible okay so here we can use the mcmc method uh, which will provide a way to approximate the posterior dis distribution which is as i said before the distribution of the data that we're going to get after uh, implementing the bayesian distribution we're going to get that type of distribution through just sampling okay so we have understood that to the Markov chain in the Monte Carlo, uh, the mixture of them, or why we will combine the two, right? So the end product is using those. We're going to make the Bayesian inference, right? So we're going to define the model, which is the prior distribution for the parameters and the likelihood of the observed data. And then there is the posterior distribution. There's this MCNC sampling where the algorithm like there are different type of mcmc algorithms like the metropolis sampling or the Gibbs sampling or if you use a library like the pcm3 you will just get um, it will it will sometimes can pick uh, one of the algorithms by itself and then which is the inference which is generated samples to make inference about the parameters such as estimating their mean body the variance or the credible intervals So, uh, just like doing or uh, yeah, doing the MCMC, this is the uh, method that we're going to follow or the steps that we can follow it, which is we've just mentioned it, but maybe in, in a, using the key terms. The first one is initialization, uh, which is the which is uh, start with an initial value for the parameter, which is the parameters that we're going to estimate about, right? Uh, we've just said that on the frequentist method. Uh, now we're going here. We've just mentioned that they are fixed, but they are unknown, right? But here we're going to estimate some value for them. And we'll start with those, taking those values as an initial value for the parameter. And then there's the transition, okay? Which is we're going to use a transition rule. Uh, as we said, it's going to be an iteration, right? The second between the first iteration and the second iteration, right? So use a transition rule to move to a new value based on the current value. So the current value or the yeah, the current value will have an impact on the second one. So the transition rule ensures that the Markov property is maintained, which is the character or the previous characters are going to have an effect or an impact on this on this kind of estimation that we're going to make. And then there's the acceptance, which determine whether to accept the new value based on certain criteria, which which means we're going to put, so we're going to keep iterating through that uh, data, right? But are we going to take that sample or that output, which is the parameter again? Are we going to accept that or are we going to deny that? So we're going to put an acceptance, which determine whether to accept the new value based on certain criteria. And yeah, this step, as ensures that the samples are from the desired distribution or uh, the samples that we're taking or that the, the samples that we have are uh, indicating the right uh, indicating the right distribution or are from the uh, right distribution and which is uh, the other one is the iteration which will repeat the transition and acceptance steps many times to create a chain of uh, samples okay so there are different type of common MC, MC meters, as I mentioned before. The first one is the Metropolis Hasting uh, algorithm, which will uh, follow the, the steps that we have just mentioned, the new state, and then the acceptance ratio. It will uh, compute the acceptance ratio, which is the ratio of the, poster, uh, the posterior probabilities of the new state in the current state, and 
whether to accept or reject and then repeat state. So in this part, maybe not to get confused about the posterior probabilities. We've just, we have these four states. The first one is the prior state, which is the already the estimation or the um, hypothesis that we already have about that data or that we're going to alert uh, by using the new data, okay? And then there we have this, the second, uh, uh, we have the new data, right? Uh, which is the, and we're going to calculate the likelihood, which is if the data that we get or the new observation that we're, get, that we're getting is going to affect the first, uh, it's going to be, you know, um, similar with the data that we already have. And then there's the um, posterior probabilities, which is the in the product or the final, pro, the final estimation that we're going to get, uh, that we're going to do in order to get the posterior, the distribution, which is called the posterior distributions. Uh, so yeah, we can, let's go to some demonstration. So yeah, here we are going to make some um, demonstration for all the steps. So we can start from importing some uh, libraries that are going to be useful for the estimation, which is NMP and scipy.stats. So the first one is generate observed data. Um, so in this case, it's going to generate random data, or we're going to pick random data from just using um, uh, like in your case, you're going to put the values or the data that we already have, which is that um, the years uh, and the price, right? So let's just use one variable here, which is x, and then we have generated a variable called x. Now, the thing that you need to note is we're going to put or alert the, our data depending on the new data that we had observed, right? So this is the new data that we have observed, or we're going to treat this data like that. So just defining the Gaussian uh, the functions. The first one is the Gaussian posterior, which is x and theta. So uh, also to, now we, we will try to integrate the knowledge that we have from the concept to the code. Okay. So the first one is uh, the first function will is defining the was the log uh, the log likely log likelihood and the prior. So we've just mentioned the two parameters, the two variables before on the note, right? Which is the log prior, which is this one, represents the log of the prior probability density function evaluated at theta. And the likelihood will define, yes, so the likelihood will define about here that we have the variable x, right? So what is the PD for? What is the, the value of the amount of, like we have just an estimation called x, right? So we're going to put it on the, before on the data that we have already, on the previous observation or estimation, right? So how much is accepted or how much likely is, how likely is the new variable called X or the new data that, that is called X is going to kind of merge itself with the previous one or entering these two uh, to the data. Let's say the here look will uh, imply, is implying the, the mean value and scale for the variance. So yeah, just putting those va values or X on this, on, on this mean and on this va variance, and also on the normally distributed data, since we have just generated a normally distributed or ga uh, Gaussian, Gaussian distribution uh, data for X. So like putting them on X, how is that going to be accepted? That is the likelihood in the, prior and uh, instead of x we're going to put theta okay so theta just assume theta. since theta is a uh, a parameter right now we're trying to here we're, we're taking theta index so we're now we're trying to estimate a parameter called theta which is the mean here so how likely is the theta going to fit on the previous uh, data again with this mean value and with this uh, scale which is the variance again so um, <laughs> This for the prior or the yeah the log prior it's used it's used for that in order to determine the acceptance you know we we need to keep the data 
where we need to build on the previous data or the previous estimation, we're going to make the second the newly acceptance rate or acceptance of proposed proposed parameters value during um, the sampling process. So the second function here it's the uh, Gaussian proposal, which is the data uh, the Gaussian pre proposal taking data taking this parameter which is uh, here to indicate the talent value for data okay so now we're going to estimate theta new and it depends on again as we have said it, it depends on the previous method which is called the theta uh, yeah this is the current or the, the current mean value that we have or that we're considering to have we can just uh, we can change the scales also here we have the right to alert the those values for the mean and for the yeah for the mean and for the scale and then we have the 0, 0 0.2 for the scale okay so here um yeah on the on the um yes so let's just take this and return titanium which is the new value or the new parameter uh for uh, the new value okay and then now we're defining another function called x1 comma x2 now it's kind of comparing the two variables okay which is calculate the proposal probability q of x2 slash x1 based on the Gaussian, okay? We're going to return a value called Q. So we can consider this Q as a, as we have mentioned on the note, the value of uh, how much are we going to take, you know, like the, yeah, the, the newly distribution that we're going to estimate from the Gaussian, uh, from the Bayesian theorem, okay? Okay, so it's going to return Q. So if we have large amount of Q or large uh, value for Q, it means that we're go it's more of we're going to accept this uh, parameter or this parameter or the new this sample or it's just an evidence that we're using the right or the the good type of distribution or for, for the for our sampling. So generating the new parameter based on the previous number. So our base here will indicate that the random variables it just samples random variable from the distribution here the. Here we'll just use the random variable for the distribution, which will just generate ra random variable for the titanium or for the newly uh, proposed new value. So here we're going to compare two uh, parameters as we've just seen, said before. So how much is going to affect the, the previous uh, alteration or the previous result? How much is going to affect the new one? And finally, we're here, which is now we're just, we're, this is, by the way, the manual form for applying the MCMC algorithm. We can just use the uh, PYMC3 library uh, here. We're going to see that, but in order to understand the knowledge, so at the end, what this library will do is just merging all this process. Okay. Now, after just defining all the process, so we will just go through the all proposed uh, yeah, we're, go we're going to go through all the proposed functions, which is all the process of all uh, what we're going to. So there's this theta, there's that current value of theta, and the here the theta is going to be, if it is a new iteration, it's the newly estimated theta or the newly um, theta value that we're estimating, okay? So using the previous or the current, we can say that the current. So the new parameters, all, all new parameters or all estimation, new estimations do will depend on the previous one, as we have said. So those are the already the parameters that we have, and these are the parameters that we're going to estimate. And this will uh, put the acceptance rate or like it's going to uh, say in how value are we going to take the, this new sample or are we going to reject this new sample? So here we're... Uh, saying there's this titanium which is the proposal function of theta uh, current then the function will depend on the current one and this is the dependency on the data or the new data for the uh, current uh, probability and the new probability so that's a true ratio if the estimation of the new one is greater than from the current one then we're going, we're going to accept this value uh, and if uh, if not, we're going to just go iterating and we're going to find for the value that will uh, fulfill this situation. If acceptance probability is greater than the ST uniform, 
uh, and again, this is the generated value or the randomly generated value. And then we're going to replace the theta current with theta new, and yeah, we are, we're going to uh, increase the acceptance. Yeah, just we can uh, iterate uh, like this, and we can implement the in, uh, the theorem on this way. But rather than doing this, we can just make them on a yeah. Here we're trying to still see or visualize the output from this. So we are. Our output will be the mean value. It's all, it's all about the, uh, the if we're calculating for the mean or if the parameter is that we're looking for is the mean, how is the mean value uh, being changed or like the how we how the previous one is altering the new? So is this iteration uh, enough or are we supposed to make another iteration? And those are the the value that we're that we're going to get. From reading the uh, graph, okay, or just we might use we can use uh, we can remove this. Okay, so we, we might just use the PYM3 library and see the like the library do all the steps. Here I have just mentioned the method or the algorithm that it is going to use but as i told you we might use uh, we can just leave this and it will choose what type of uh, method will be appropriate for the for this method or for the mcnc method but here we have just selected one and yeah by using the pure industry library as the p in those normal here we're going really looking for the mean value so we're adjusting the prior values or the, the rate of estimation that we have already have again you're going to you need to change those variables like mu and sigma okay maybe sigma in this case or scale another variables too we're going to adjust that in order to show uh the in order to indicate that this is my previous variables or this is my previous distribution or estimation that i have in mind and the new observation will be We've observed in this case x, but if if you if, if our observ observations uh, include another parameters and another data, then we're going to include them here. So uh, in you from prior, so we're going to depend for those parameters on the previous parameters. So yeah, and there is the step is we've just used metropolis, and we're going to play the two uh, plots, which is the trace uh, the trace plot and the plot poster. So uh, in here we have got those the those two are indicating the trace plot and the final one is the posterior plot so uh, the posterior plot will be the final uh, plots that we're going to have since i have told you or since uh, we've been talking about what the posterior distribution is the posterior plot will see uh, will show us how the distribution is and how the new parameters uh, are what they look like on the new data Okay, so here um, on the trace plot, it is going to show us the process or while iterating through the data, how the iteration was, okay? On the x-axis, we're going to see the iterations or the number of uh, iteration, the, the, and, yeah, the number of iteration that it had gone through. And if we have see if, the, if those chains are following each other, then it means that, so yeah, here. It means that I think it is just one. Yeah, it means that um, they are like they are continuous. Okay, they are the previous results and the new results. They are type of the same, or they're not that much uh, varying with each other. It needs to get which is uh, which we can say that the the iteration or using this MCMC method, it's not covering very large amount of sample data or it's not it's not going to see a new value okay the next iteration is not going to see that much new value it ke if it keeps aligning with each other or with the previous one so it's it is it needs to be so the uh so if the chains or if the relation between the lines are are going to be a little bit different so it means that it is discovering different type of data sample data but also it might be you know if it gets through, it needs to be stationary at some point. Um, since they're going to be the same, the previous in the new one, they're going to be the same since they both have reached or had, they're going to keep getting the sample or the distribution uh, that is going to 
indicate or that, that is going to uh, satisfy the acceptance ratio or that is going to indicate the uh, statistics or the distribution. So yeah, it needs to uh, align or it needs to be on same stats, uh, same stationary point at some point, okay? Or it needs to be the same, the iteration are going to be the same. So the second one is going to plot the plot posterior trace, which is this one. In this one, it is just going to plot what type of sample data do we have. Again, here we have the iteration and here the mean values, okay? So what type of data that we're going to, what type of distri distribution we're gaining from um, going through the samples, okay? So in the first iteration, in the second, in the third. So this is our output result. So we expect this results to be convergent at the middle, which is to indicate that the mean value if, if, if so if it is if we're using for example here we're using the normally distributed data from the beginning so we expect many values or many numbers on the uh, to be uh, to converge or to be included on the mean part right since we have just estimated a mean value of three if the mean is three over here then we, we expect many of the values to be around this mean value so we expect a convergent graph on for the plot posterior trace which is like this. Yeah, and the, in this way we can figure out, we can estimate different parameters depending on the uh, depending on the context that we're going to use or that we're going to follow. Uh, yeah. So thank you everyone. I will be sharing this code and the slides.